I always learn a lot from my patients, but we're about to see patients with some very unique health conditions. Let's get started. It's not easy because he has one of the planet's rarest medical conditions. Which one? My condition is Schwarzschild syndrome. Never even heard of it. It's a muscle condition wow. where your muscles get really, really tight. That's how I become stiff because they're always working. This type of abnormal tone of muscles uh, I've seen in the elderly with dystonia and maybe even Parkinsonism. I've never seen it in a young person. Owen's dad, Will, noticed that his son wasn't moving like other children. Owen visited eight doctors in eight months. This is why at every pediatric visit uh, that's a physical, we do developmental milestones and we see how a child's developing because in many instances we can do some early intervention, whether that's adding a hormone, uh, physical therapy, behavioral modifications to help children uh, reach their maximal potential. He has persistent muscular contraction and you look at somebody who, like Owen, who looked like a little pocket Hercules. He's got unbelievable muscle definition. Um, and that's really because he's, you know, he's got isotonic contractions all the time. That's incredible that he has this contraction. Imagine how you feel when you get a cramp and imagine that going through it your whole body. That's the difficulty this boy's dealing with. In the small town of Scheidelberg, Austria, lives a teenager with a very rare genetic condition. Raphael's skin grows extremely quickly and turns into confetti-like flakes. Oh, is this ichthyosis? My condition is called ichthyosis, mm. or the fish scale disease, and I've had it since birth. It's really unfortunate that in the medical community, maybe to be relatable, especially when it comes to pathology, we name things after foods or animals, and it, it can be quite problematic for patients uh, because they have to say they have fish skin disease or like ichthyosis with confetti. Like that's not ideal for someone to say. Ichthyosis with confetti has been recorded fewer than 20 times worldwide. It causes abnormal quantities of keratin in the outer layer of the skin. Skin, the way that it heals, the way that it functions is on the epidermis, which is the superficial layer of skin, you constantly have shedding of skin and new skin cells come up. And that is the way that the skin normally functions. That's why uh, if you really test dust inside a home, uh, a lot of it is made up of human skin. And while you can't see it happening, it's happening all the time. In 2008, Raphael's mother discovered an unusual solution to treating her son's condition. Oh, interesting to remove Raphael's excess skin at 6.30 every morning, he's lowered into a specially made tank containing 300 skin-eating fish. Wow. I've seen pedicures like this where they have the fish uh, chew the dead skin. This also doesn't hurt because these are sloughed off dead skin cells, so it's not causing him any discomfort, at least I don't think. It was worse before. I couldn't move as much. And it was harder to clean up the scales. This is much better for me. And he's feeding the fish. It's like a win-win, a true symbiotic relationship. Oh, Thomas and Vincent's headgear might look like it's out of a science fiction movie, but it's been developed by a team of doctors and designed to shield them from certain death. When Thomas and Vincent were nearing their second birthday, Reddish marks appeared on their cheekbones. Reddish marks on a young child like that don't necessarily point a clear picture of what's going on. It needs to be placed within a whole host of different differentials, like possible diagnoses. And only through a very thorough history, a thorough physical, doing some lab work, can you start narrowing down exactly what's going on. We developed small cancers. For example, I had one here on my lip. We had others on our arms and face, which we had to get rid of. The twins were diagnosed with xeroderma pigmentosum, mm. known as XP, giving their skin a potentially fatal hypersensitivity to ultraviolet light. For XP, uh, individuals will have their cancer risk go up 10,000 times uh, than that of a normal person or an average person. So if you're not shielding yourself from UV rays, your risk of cancer is almost certain. We both have a scientific education 
and quickly we concluded that the only possible solution at the time was to protect them from ultraviolet rays. And hopefully supplementation with vitamin D. Given the fact that you need sunlight to convert vitamin D into, into its active form uh, via your kidneys, so um, yeah, vitamin D supplementation is gonna be important for them. Augustinopolis in northern Brazil is the home to a little girl with a condition so rare there have only been 50 cases reported since the Middle Ages. Wow, that's very rare. Congenital hypertrichosis, or oh. werewolf syndrome. Again, with the terrible naming of conditions, like stop calling it werewolf syndrome. First of all, there's no oh. such thing as a werewolf. No one is proud to carry that oh. label and that stigma associated with it. Let it go. Two-year-old Camille D'Souza is living with the same affliction today. Well, first of all, with hypertrichosis, where you have excess uh, hair growth, uh, it can happen in many different ways. Like even hirsutism, which can come with PCOS, can have hair growing in unusual places for a female that you normally see on a male. But then there's other cases where you see it growing everywhere, and that's terminal hair, so it's gonna be darker, thicker, as opposed to like that peach fuzz that can sometimes never fall off a human from when they're born uh, as a child, which is normally it's supposed to fall off. There is no medication that can make the hair fall out. Laser treatment is the only option. Doctors begin with a test run of the laser to see how her skin will react. Also, given that her skin shade is a little bit darker, there could be risks with hypopigmentation, burns. Successful yeah. removal of all her hair will mean hundreds of treatments. In a lot of um, situations like that, the laser, what it's doing is it's heating up the hair follicle and actually destroying it. And the more you destroy it, the more likely it, like more times you destroy it, meaning the more treatments you go in for, the more likely you are either to cause scar tissue or permanent damage so that you're not growing hair in that area. Five weeks later, and Camille is vastly improved and already more accepted. Yeah, you see those burns? Um, I, I, I would think that with technology, it's unfortunate to say, but I think with the technology we, hear, we have here in the U.S. and the experience we have here in the U.S., I think maybe it could have been done in ways where uh, it wouldn't cause that type of skin damage. But then again, it's hard to say. Weighing in at just over 46 pounds, he is nearly three times the weight of an average baby boy. Yeah, something's going on here from a metabolism standpoint. When a child is this size, it's rarely due to just traditional overfeeding. Uh, this is some kind of hyperphagic syndrome where the child's eating too much due to something in the metabolism. We started to notice he was overweight when he was three months old. But from that moment on, his weight just kept rising. Generally speaking, in the medical community, we like babies to carry a little bit of excess fat. It's good for development. It's, it's ideal early on. We've seen that it fosters good neurologic development. But then when it crosses a line and it starts going past the growth curve of the 99th percentile, now you're putting the child at risk for developmental issues from not just the musculoskeletal side of things, but also the cardiovascular, neuromuscular. Imagine what strain on his heart just to move because he's carrying this much extra weight for his age. Santiago was already suffering from life-threatening obesity-related diseases, including diabetes and hypertension. Everybody is expecting that as the parents treating him very bad, and that's the reason why he's so obese, but it's not actually possible to feed them into that degree of obesity. That's why I said it's not a, an overfeeding type situation. Santiago is suffering from a condition called congenital leptin deficiency. This is a hormone uh, that's very important for controlling appetite. And actually children who suffer from this will not just overeat and have this hyperphagic state, but as they get older, they will eat in secret. They will steal from others' food. They will get into fights over food. A daily injection of the hormone leptin will stop Santiago's constant hunger, and eventually his weight should be normalized. Isn't it incredible how much of a role and impact hormones have in our body? And that's one hormone. There are so many hormones that are playing these vital homeostasis controlling factors in our body. And like a hormone to protect us from overeating, a hormone to protect us from undereating, a hormone to make sure we're not over hydrated, one protect us that we're not under hydrated. There's so many sensors within our body. It's truly incredible that we actually continue to function each day. Tuan Zhi was born with an extremely rare condition known as severe genou recurvatum. 
Wow, I didn't even understand exactly when I was first looking what was going on, but this condition is basically known as knee hyperextension. So when you lock out your knee, it's really not supposed to go past 10 degrees. And if it does, for whatever reason, whether you have a, a congenital deformity, muscle weakness, uh, something going on with the bone, that's considered this condition. Her knees bend the wrong way so she walks on the backs of her lower legs. This is obviously not due to a connective tissue disorder like Ehlers-Danlos, but I see a lot of patients who have laxity in their ligaments can hyperextend, and sometimes over time from standing on hyper lax ligaments can actually develop a condition like this. Maybe not to this degree though. Despite her disability, Twanji learned to walk and got around as best she could attending school where she was accepted by other students. That's amazing because social acceptance is of utmost importance during uh, childhood and adolescent development. I do see a lot of, and foresee a lot of problems for her um, from an infection standpoint, unless she gets adequate padding for her knees where you can constantly have skin breaks. And I imagine calluses would form, but even with calluses, you're gonna have issues with infection. Tuan Ji was content with her life until two years ago when a charity offered to fund surgery. We also don't know why, but this condition is more prevalent in women. She underwent a series of scans to help surgeons determine what could be done. That's of utmost importance because you need to figure out how are you gonna reattach muscles so that she can walk properly? Like what's missing, if anything? Is there a patella? Is there a tibia? Is there a femur? Where are the ligaments that are, uh, are present or not present? Because you can take donor grafts from other parts of the body and attach bones that way, but you need to know before you go in. Otherwise, the patient will be under anesthesia for way too long and that's not ideal. We will perform operations on both sides of your knees, the ankle joints and the soles of your feet. Your soles are not flat, so we need to make them flat through operations. She and her parents had to decide if it was worth risking surgery. An important question everyone should ask undergoing surgery, because it's easy to fall into what we call routine procedures or routine surgery, not blaming or throwing any specialty under the bus, but if a surgeon's job is to operate, they're gonna offer an operation. It's the surgeon's job to know when that's appropriate and not, but I say let's take it one level further and take the otis on ourselves to ask the question, is it important? And what happens if I don't go for surgery? A few days later, she was brought to the OR for her first operation where Dr. Chen attempted to straighten her right leg. Yeah, so based on looking at this drawing, I could see that there's a very sharp angle between the femur and the tibia where they normally meet. They would have to literally cut the bone and maybe create an artificial joint or make use of the uh, structures that already exist. Again, I'm not a surgeon nor an orthopedic surgeon, so I leave it up to specialists, sub-subspecialists like this. The operation is a long, complicated process that involves cutting a precisely measured triangular-shaped piece of bone from the back of Twanji's lower thigh. We cut and remove this piece of bone then adjust the thigh bone so it will become like this. This is like when medicine, artistry, and engineering all coincide. Just three weeks after entering the hospital, both of Twanji's wow. legs are now straight. Each surgery is followed by several weeks of muscle rehabilitation to help her support her newly structured bones. That type of muscular rehabilitation is gonna be of utmost importance, not just for increasing circulation to the area to help it heal, but also from a neuromuscular standpoint so that she can learn to have good control over these muscles and the new motions they do. Because before, she's learned and taught those muscles to fire in a way that has to completely change. Like biomechanically, she has to change. Twanji has two four-hour operations in two weeks. Her right foot is corrected first, and then her left. Three weeks after the fourth operation, her feet and ankles are still supported by plaster casts. But Twanji takes her first proper steps. That's amazing. Five months after her final operation in Taiwan. Which is not that long, five months. She was four foot two, but has now gained wow. 12 inches in height. Now that her legs are straight, I go for a walk whenever I have time. Choice, control, independence, that's what gives humans that uh, layer of intrinsic happiness. How can doctors miss a case of lupus? Click here to check out this patient's story. I hope you'll enjoy it, and as always, stay happy and healthy.